Okay. <coughs> okay. So in the last tutorial, we've built a F FPS controller that controls the player using a capsule collider and a rigid body and some controls in here. And that looked something like this. Okay, we could control it. We could shoot. And if we give it enough movement speed, it could even oh, walk properly. But one of the drawbacks is that if we stop moving, it takes a second to slide and then it stops. And if you don't change the drag to a greater number when you're stationary, this uh, model will keep sliding. Something like this. Okay, to fix that, we're going to use a built-in method called uh, character controller. So if we go to add components and search for character controller, we should see a character controller component. So we're going to drag that, we're going to delete completely the rigid body, and we're going to delete completely the capsule collider. All we're going to leave is the character controller. So by default, this should, some, this should look something like this. Maybe you want to change the height to 1.8. This is in centimeters, by the way, so 1 meter and 80 centimeters of height. And we're going to change uh, some controller settings. So if, we, so if we open up the controller script, this is what we have. So one of the first things we're going to do is delete these unnecessary arguments. So we're going to delete the rigid body, the capsule collider, we're not going to import them in here and everything that uses the rigid body is no longer needed. We're still going to keep this uh, jump public void because we're going to use it later and then the is grounded needs a little bit of tweaking so for now we're just going to comp comment it out and the rest is not very very important. So this is the block of code that is responsible for clamping the mouse movements if it reaches 90 degrees up. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this maybe a little bit later but for now we're, what we're gonna need is to import a new uh, component that is of type obviously a char controller, character controller so character controller and then we're gonna import it into the start so character controller is equal to get component character controller. Okay now we have access to our character controller that is attached to the same game object as this controller script. So the very first thing we're gonna need is obviously a way to move the player. So to do that we're gonna declare a vector3 variable. So we already have a movement speed which we're gonna use. What we need, what we're gonna need is a uh, private vector3 of movement and a private vector3 with the name gravity. We're going to use this gravity a little bit later. First thing we're going to do is work with this uh, movement. So what we're going to say in the, the fixed update is movement is equal to. The first argument is going to be transform.write times the input manager dot horizontal. Transform.forward times the input manager dot vertical. Okay, so this is now responsible for the movement. So the way we're going to translate this vector3 into actual movement is by saying character controller dot move. This is now responsible for the movement of the, con uh, the character. So inside these brackets now what we have to say is the movement times the speed which is right here the movement speed. So we pass it right here. Movement speed times obviously time dot delta time. If we save this and open up Unity, have a little error in here. I'm just going to delete this. If I hit now play, we should be able to move. Obviously, we are hovering right now since we don't have any gravity implemented. But we can shoot if we can find some collision. Yeah, there it is. We can shoot and we can move forwards and backwards. And obviously, we, if we multiply the speed, we can move even faster. Okay, now let's implement the gravity. So we're going to open up our controller script. And now 
we're going to declare a new variable. So in here, we where we have jump force, we're going to add another variable. We're going to say gravity force. Okay, now we have a gravity force. We're going to default that to minus 9.81, since that's the Earth's uh, gravity. And then back down here, where the where we move the controller, where we declared a, a vector 3 gravity. Now we're going to use that. We're going to say gravity dot y is equal to. Okay, so all we have to pass in here is the force of the gravity. So gravity, we're going to say gravity force time dot delta time. And then obviously, we're going to have to translate this gravity into the character move. So we're going to say the same way that we did before, character controller dot move. We're going to say gravity. Now let's do a little bit of test. Let's select our our player in here and let's drag it. And now if, if I hit play, this player should fall. Okay, now the player should fall, but as we can see, it stays uh, stationary. It actually falls, but at a very slow rate. So the reason for that is that where we define the gravity dot y, we say equal. The problem is that we are basically clamping the gravity force. So to fix that, all we have to do is say plus, so we're adding to the gravity, and then we're translating the gravity into move. So now if we hit play, our player falls to the ground. We can obviously move, and we can obviously still shoot. Now we're going to need a way of making this character uh, jump. So in our controller script, back where we have the isGrounded function, boolean function that returns a true or a false val uh, value, we're going to use that. And as we can see in here, we use a capsule collider. Now, since we don't have a capsule collider, we only have this uh, character controller, which has a built-in uh, collider. So as you might have guessed, we're going to use that. We're going to select all these capsule colliders and all we're going to do is rename it. So from capsule collider, we're going to do character controller. And now we have no more errors. And one more thing that we have to change in here is this uh, offset uh, value. For some reason, this 0 0.01 doesn't work very well, so we're going to bump that to 15. So now, if we save that, this grounded function uh, should work. So now we're going to use this uh, grounded function. We're going to say, into the jump uh, function, we're going to, first we're going to ask if the character is grounded. So is grounded. This is going to return a boolean. So if is grounded, all we're going to do is modify this uh, gravity.y. So we're going to say gravity.y. And now in here we can we can basically just add the gravity, uh, the jump force. But what we're going to do is a little bit different. I'm going to use a formula that I found. And the formula is mathf dot square root of jump force times time dot delta time. So if we try to jump, we'll see that nothing is happening. And that is because into the jump, that is because into the jump uh, function, we're saying jump force times minus two times the time dot delta time. The mistake in here is that we're using time dot delta time in here, and then we're using it again in here. So all we have to do in here is change this time dot delta time with gravity. So the first of gravity, gravity force. And if we hit save and go to our game, and if we try to jump, we can jump quite high, actually. We might have to change that. OK, now basically everything works fine. Now all we have to do is uh, build a pause system. We're going to delete all these check and pause uh, functions. We're going to hard code this uh, offset. And then we're going to head into the input manager. Now in here, we're going to build the pause uh, play system. And the reason why is because that 
if we hit pause all we have to all we want to do is uh, block the input from the keyboard and the mouse if you're building it for a uh, computer so to do that we're going to declare a private boolean value of pause we're going to default that to false and then at the start of the scene we want to do two things first one is to lock the cursor so to lock the cursor it's as simple as saying cursor dot lock state is equal to cursor lock mode dot locked and then to hide the cursor we say cursor dot visible is obviously equal to false so quick test if we play the cursor should disappear next thing is to check for input that if if we press the escape button these uh, inputs should freeze so to do that we're gonna copy this and where we ask for the key code we're gonna ask if we press escape if we press escape instead of controller dot jump we're gonna say is paused we're gonna go ahead and build that function so private void is paused and inside that we're gonna ask if paused so if we already pause what we want to do is copy these two lines paste them in here so if the pause is set to true what we want to do is keep these uh, lock state and visible to false and locked and then change the pause to false and then if we're not we want to change these into the opposite states so pause becomes true visible becomes true and the lock state becomes none so now to actually use this pause all we're gonna say is if pause return that's all we have to do okay so now if we hit escape we can no longer move we can uh, shoot but we can no longer move the reason why we can still shoot is because we're checking for input into this other uh, weapon script okay so one last issue that we have is that even if we're jumping and hit escape into the same time we're still uh, moving and that is because when we hit pause these are clamped into their uh, original state so to, so to fix that what we have to do is ask if we're paused so if we are paused we want to disable the jumping so we're going to delete the jumping from there and we're going to put it into this else statement and also we're going to copy all these into this else statement so if we're paused all we want to do is delete these and after deleting them all we want to do is clamp them to zero so now if we play the game and try to walk and in the same time hit escape it's instantly going to stop